When NVIDIA launched their 40 series mobile GPUs, there was a significant gap between the lower tiered variants, the 4050, 4060 and 4070 and the top dogs, the RTX 4080 and 4090. And we are not just talking about raw GPU grunt, but even when it came to power limits, while the mid-range options on paper have been allowed to run at 140 watts max, you only very rarely saw those kinds of power draws outside of synthetic benchmarks. In games, things leveled out at roughly 100 to 110 watts, putting the mid-range cards and especially the 4070 in a very rough spot. But it's 2025 and while we still wait on final samples of the 5070, we finally got our hands on the newest member of Nvidia's mobile family, the RTX 5070 Ti. And with 12 gigs of video memory and 140 watts of real power draw, it might hit that perfect sweet spot between the mid-range and high-end options. Of course, this will come down to price, and for now at least, it looks like you will rather see models that will be available with 5080s and 5090s with the new card than laptops that maxed out with 4070s and 5070s. A new laptop GPU needs, well, a laptop so we can test it, and once again the good folks from XMG sent over their new Pro 16, which combines the 5070Ti with Intel's 275HX, and this should give us a very good early picture of what Nvidia's newest member of their mobile family will bring to the table. So without any further ado, let's see if we are dealing with Nvidia's best laptop GPU for 2025. As you can see, the 5070 Ti sits smacked up in the middle between the 5080 and the 5070, which, by the way, maxes out with a max power draw of 100 watts or 125 with dynamic boost this year. So again, I would assume the lower end card will most likely be reserved for thinner machines, while the Ti variant should find a home in more gaming or workstation oriented laptops like the Pro 16 in our case, or something like Lenovo's Legion Pro 5. And by the way, Lenovo promised must us a sample quite soon, so please make sure to subscribe so you won't miss that one once it's live. As for the XMG itself, well, it basically looks like a Neo 16, but to hit that lower price point, some sacrifices had to be made in material selection. Only the display lid is metal, while the rest of the chassis is plastic. That said, the Pro 16 looks as clean as its more high-end counterpart and chassis quality and rigidity can easily rival some of the best all-metal chassis out there. For a gaming laptop, the 16-inch also looks quite clean, just in case you need a subtle workstation during the day. And with a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 and the audio port on the left, an additional pair of USB-A 3.2 Gen 1s and a very speedy full-size SD card reader on the right and a Thunderbolt 4 mini display port and HDMI 2.1 in the back, you should hardly miss anything when it comes to connectivity. Add in solid upgrade options, a very good if not quite class leading keyboard and touchpad experience and a super fast 300Hz QHD plus IPS panel that may top out with sRGB coverage and only delivers average contrast results but still performs very alright in our measurements and the XMG Pro 16 pretty much checks all the boxes for a gaming and creator laptop that does not require you to sacrifice one of your kidneys to be able to afford it. On the CPU side of things, the Core Ultra 9 275HX is an old acquaintance by now and our CPU rating shows that it will not be a limiting factor for the RTX 5070 Ti. And Intel's new bread and butter silicon for higher end gaming and performance laptops can run with up to 150 watts in the XMG's chassis. System performance is equally impressive and the 16 inch is also one of the first notebooks in the studio to be equipped with a PCIe Gen 5 drive. And transfer rates are as impressively snappy as they are stable without any throttling, even doing our torture tests. But of course you're all here for the star of the show today, so let's kick things off with our synthetic GPU tests to see what a 140 watts RTX 5070 Ti has on offer. Aided by the fast Intel HX CPU, Firestrike already paints a very favorable picture for the all new mobile GPU and the XMG Pro 16 can relatively easily keep up with some of the fastest 4080 laptops we tested last year and in general we also get a pretty significant lead over the 4070 even in this more CPU bound scenario. 
Our times by comparison looks quite similar, so it really seems like the Blackwell GPU can properly take advantage of the 140 watts power limit. Even though in more GPU bound scenarios, at least in synthetics for now, a fast 175 watts RTX 4080, like in the older Legion Pro 7 for example, can still pull ahead. While the ray tracing focused Port Royal shows almost the same scores, which is quite impressive, especially considering the price point and energy consumption here. But how does this translate into the real world? Well, Blender shows pretty much the same results as our synthetics, and the 5070 Ti goes head to head with fast 4080s while easily scoring a significant lead over the 4070, which can make the new card a great option for creators. Unfortunately, I did not have enough time to try the Pro 16 for our video editing workflows, but from what I've seen so far, I would not expect any problems. And the added VRAM compared to the upcoming 5070 will give you a tremendous advantage in content creation workflows. This leaves us with our gaming benchmarks, and to give you a clearer picture, I will show you a few more games than usual in a more condensed way. So if you want to take it all in in your own time, feel free to pause the video or head on over to our website, where you can find all of our tests and more, both regarding the RTX 5070 Ti individually and the XMG Pro 16 as a whole. And well, even in 1080p, I would say these numbers look great, and with the HX CPU, this is once again a very versatile combination, even if you're more into competitive titles, with the same general lead over the 4070 and getting close or even beating the 4080. In QHD it's basically more of the same, so even in more GPU bound scenarios, the 5070 Ti performs admirably and is very well positioned, both when it comes to any last gen options available and also between what is and will be available within the Blackwell generation. 4K is possible in older titles, in anything more recent you would really have to utilize upscalers or reduce settings to get playable frame rates. These are all the games we tested natively on the Pro 16 and as you can see, you will have a great time running pretty much everything above 60 FPS without a problem in QHD. To give you an idea about what you can expect with DLSS and multi-frame generation, we ran our usual Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk path tracing tests. And while I think the experience is great, I would probably also stick to ray tracing in this case to get a bit more FPS to begin with for an even smoother experience. Which leaves us with fan noise, temperatures and battery life. As always, please enjoy our samples for the former and if you want any additional information, please once again head on over to our written review on the website. We have a lot more data for this puppy. It also seems like XMG wasn't content with just putting together a fast gaming laptop. The Pro 16 also does not disappoint when being disconnected from any outlets. With a little more than 9 hours in our simulated Wi-Fi test, the clean looking 60 incher even presents itself as a reliable and flexible computing companion when being out and about. And this also pretty much sums it up for both the Pro 16 and the RTX 5070 Ti. While we of course have to wait for additional models to come in, judging from this puppy right here you basically get 4080 performance for 4070 prices with all the bells and whistles and additional features Nvidia's new Blackwell architecture brings to the table. The XMG presents itself as a very well-rounded performer with very solid performance results and no real weaknesses. And all of this can be yours for a price I would consider fair for what is offered. I really hope though that manufacturers do not only put this card in lower and high end laptops, but also offer the 5070 Ti as the upgrade for the true mid range segment of the market, somewhere in the $1500 to $2000 price brackets, which could make these configs the real winners of 2025 when you're looking for a capable gaming and workstation machine. As always, please let me know what you think and which mobile GPU so far would be on your shortlist if you are in the market for a laptop upgrade this year. Sound off in the comments below. And that's all from my end today. Thanks a ton for watching. My name is Alex. Please consider leaving your like and sub on your way out and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.